I'm Diane Banks. Thanks for being up bright and early with us this morning. Want to introduce my special guest to you today, uh, read a little bit of her letter to you, and then we will talk away. She says, Dear Diane, I feel really funny about nominating myself for an award like this. I think it would mean a lot more coming from someone else, but at the risk of blowing my own horn, I thought I'd let you decide if you think I'm worthy. So first of all, for our listeners, never feel funny about nominating yourself or letting me know about your story. Please let me know if you have a story to share. You're doing good work in the community. Okay, are you active in the local community? Yes, on many levels and in many different ways. The most significant has been my involvement with the Awakenings Project for the past 13 years. Did you develop or help participate in a local program that's benefited the Chicagoland area? She says, yes, I'm an artist member, organizer, curator, grant writer, fundraiser. I don't think she's busy enough to you. (laughs) Vice president and now president of the Awakenings Project. They call me a maven. It's a grassroots initiative whose mission is to assist artists with psychiatric illness in developing their craft and finding an outlet for their creative abilities through all forms of art. We also work to raise public awareness and acceptance of the creative talents of people living with psychiatric disorders who work in the fields of fine art, music, literature, and drama. So instead of reading more of the letter now, we're going to start talking with Irene. I I think this will be a wonderful conversation. What a wonderful project to get involved with. Welcome, Irene Lamb O'Neill. Hi. How are you? Good. I must clarify that I'm no longer president at this time. Uh, when I wrote the letter, I was, and now Robert Lundin is president, and I'm secretary. Okay. Um, I really needed a break, and he was the founder. It was really his oh, idea okay. to start this project, and um, he wanted to take over as president, so I said, let the board elect him. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like, my gosh, you've, you're doing so many things with the project that you're you're busy enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so take us to the beginnings, Irene. And, and actually, for our listeners, too, the website is awakeningsproject.org if they'd like to follow uh, the website while we chat. Uh, so, Irene, talk to me about the beginnings of this. Now, I know it's been around for many, many years, but how did you get involved? Um. I saw Robert Lundin speak when I worked at Lucen Technologies, and he spoke about his mental illness. He was very open about it, and afterwards I went up to him and I said, wow, I have bipolar disorder, but I wouldn't have the nerve to speak in front of a bunch of people about that. And he said, well, we're starting an art project, and I was already an artist. I owned an art gallery with two other women, and so he asked me to get involved. So I jumped on board, and it was just going to be a big one-weekend show, and that was in April of 97, and it's just kept going ever since, so taking on a life of its own, and just keeps going and going. So you really got on board at the very beginning? Yeah. Okay, and then and where was it located then, and where is it now? Well, for eight years, we had a studio in Glen Ellen. And that was pretty central because many of us came from DuPage County, but we represented artists from all over the state. And we had to move, and we moved to Elgin about two years ago, and that's been such a great place for us. Wonderful. And and if our listeners want to visit, where are you in Elgin? We're at 164 Division Street in the professional building on the fourth floor, and it's a beautiful building, and um, we just love it. We get a lot more people coming and a lot more attention in Elgin. And I'll tell you, too, Irene, from looking at some of the artwork on the website, just beautiful and creative and interesting and, you know, so many different things. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it's not all decorative. It's really from the heart. Right, absolutely. Now, tell us about the origins. I I can imagine that this was, you know, a pretty big undertaking. Where did you find your artists at first? How did you get the whole project together? And I'm curious, too, as to how long it was from when you came up with the idea uh, to when it opened. Well, it was about six months from the first meeting of the planning committee, and Bob was living in a building where there were three or four other people who had mental illnesses who also were artists, and he said, I'm sure we could find a dozen people from across the state if we have a show. And the very first show, we had 50 artists from all over the state of Illinois. Wow, that's amazing. That's a huge number of artists. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I saw on the website, and again, it's awakeningsproject.org, 
that uh, that I want you to talk to us a little bit about, which I thought this was really interesting. It says that there exists some positive relationship between affective disorders and being endowed with creative genius. Yeah, we're not claiming to be creative geniuses, but um, well, there have the, been studies on that. The artwork looks it, though, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, there's been studies by K. Redfield Jameson called Touched with Fire. She wrote a book throughout history. A lot of artists, writers, musicians, composers might have had a mental illness. It's not always a proven link, but, you know, they seem to detect some kind of a link between the two. Okay. And how many artists are you representing right now? How many are showing their works? Um, usually between 20 and 30, but if we have a big statewide show, we can get 50 to 75 artists. And now, this is correct me if I'm wrong, this is a working studio too as well? Yes. It's open every Saturday from 11 to 2. It's open to anyone. Anyone can come sit in with us. Um we have anywhere from a half a dozen to a dozen artists. We have the table, two big tables that seat 12 people, and um, we just come here and make art and or just collaborate with each other about what's upcoming, what shows, and we talk about what's planned for the future. I love that. So anybody can go, whether your work is shown or not, anybody can go in and, and work and enjoy. Yes. In fact, we we did a couple of... Um, days where we went to Elgin Mental Health Center and worked with people who were inpatient at the time. And um, several of them have then been released and have come back to our studio to see us again. And we have lots of art supplies, and we just let anybody use the art supplies that we have. So you don't even have to have your own art supplies to be able to use the studio. So not only a creative environment, but a very welcoming one. You come on back. Uh Uh-huh. And in, in addition to, uh, you know, the artists, um, you know, and like you say, anybody welcome from the community to come in and, and work on the projects. I thought it was interesting, too, on the website, all the different areas that you encompass. There's music and um, drama and such. So talk to us a little bit about that. Well, we're still developing the drama. We haven't really gotten very far with it. We had a couple of Kansas <laughs> City um, workshops where they came out and did uh, improvisation with us. Um, the music is usually like when we have opening receptions or uh, if we're at a conference, a couple of guitarists will come and just sit down and play at our booth, you know, just to attract people and uh, entertain people. And then the literary is the big part. And Robert Lundin really developed that because he's a writer and a photographer. And we have a literary journal. This is the 10-year anniversary of the Awakenings Review. This journal gets submissions from people from all over the country and even other countries. And um, Out of about two to 300 submissions a year, we have to choose like 30 authors. And then we publish it about once a year. Wow. So like you say, that's that's a huge part of the project that's been developed. And, yeah. and you're open to music and all sorts of things. So really getting all the creative arts in there, which is a beautiful thing. Uh-huh. Tell me a little bit, Irene, about your artists. I'd love to know more about, and I'm sure our listeners would, you know, what, what their feeling is about this project, being part of it, and, and maybe telling others about it, too. How do they feel? Um, people get involved at all different levels. Some may only show in one or two shows. Others may get really involved, come to the studio, join the board, plan activities, so even our board members, it's really empowering for people, people who had only an identity as a person with a mental illness and identify like, I am bipolar. They totally identify with that. And now they're like, I'm an artist, and, you know, this is what I do, and this is what I enjoy, and, you know, and I also have bipolar disorder. And what a beautiful thing to be getting credit for their talent uh-huh. you know, rather than labeled, Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, you mentioned that in your letter too. Now, I didn't read that when I was um, introducing you, but one of the things you said in the letter when I asked about uh, have you triumphed over difficult obstacles or illnesses, uh, and you said, yes, I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder disorder since 1976, was in and out of the hospital for the first 13 years in the past 20. I've only been hospitalized once. Uh, came to a point of acceptance of the illness and the medications which helped me control it. I don't know that I've triumphed, but I've been able to manage the symptoms. So when you, what kinds of symptoms were you getting and and what was it that made you say, well, I need to, to seek treatment for this? 
Oh, in the early part of the illness, I was mainly depressed. I dropped out of school. I, I you know, quit my job. Um, I, I couldn't function, and I ended up in the hospital for depression. And then uh, later on in the illness, I had mania, which um, I became so speeded up, I wouldn't sleep. I would um, think I didn't need any sleep, and why is everybody else wasting time sleeping? <laughs> And I would always inevitably get myself in trouble and end up in a hospital for mania. So I experienced all of that. Um, and in the beginning, I didn't want to be on any medication. I, I just didn't think it was an illness. I thought it was an a issue, <laughs> a problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, so I fought that for a long time, and I was in and out of hospitals. And uh, being on medication has helped me tremendously. But the Awakenings Project has also given my life incredible meaning and purpose. And so where in your in the treatment for the bipolar disorder did you find the uh, Awakenings Project? Um, well, it was 1996, and um, it, it just so happened that at the time when the planning meeting was supposed to be October of 96, the first planning meeting, I was in the hospital. That's my only hospitalization since 1980. Seven. So um, I called, as soon as I got out, I called Bob Landine and I said, did I miss it? I was in the hospital. <laughs> and he said, oh, no, we still need some more help. And so <laughs> still doing it now. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. And, and with your experience and your treatments, you so can relate firsthand to, you know, the kinds of things that the artists go through. And, and what better to have someone, you know, leading them that, that knows how it feels. Right. All of us, just about the entire board, all have illness ourselves, and all, you know, the artists, and it, it's just empowering, because people tend to think, oh, it's the inmates running the asylum, or whatever, <laughs> but it works. Yeah, and talk to us a little bit more about that, in terms of, you know, you mentioned it, it adding so much to your life and giving it so much meaning. Um, well, I also now, you know, I mentioned I used to work for Lucent Technologies, which was a wonderful career, but uh, they were downsizing and everybody kind of was getting laid off. So I got an early retirement package and um, I was able to really pick up more with the Awakenings Project. And I also got a job working for the DuPage County Health Department as a consumer specialist, which means that I have mental illness myself, and I'm a role model for others, and I teach classes in recovery. So my whole life kind of revolves around this now, you know, between awakenings and my full-time job at the health department. I'm constantly working with people who have mental illnesses as a peer, they call it, Um, you know, somebody who myself has experienced it. And with all this uh, busyness, are you finding time to sleep, Irene? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I do. <laughs> I have to get my sleep. I know that now. I understand it better. <laughs> yeah, because I'm telling you're busier than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, with the Awakenings Project, I'd love to know too a little bit more about your artists in terms of you know how old are they? What's the age range like? How do you decide whose work is shown too? Um, well, it depends on how much room there is, but the age is anywhere from twenty to sixty, seventy. Um, <laughs> I'm already 55. I can, I'll be 55 in September. I can hardly believe that. But um, I feel young. You sound and, about 30. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> um, the artist, it depends on the size of the location we're going to be in. If we're in a huge gallery like the Aurora Public Arts Commission we've been in before, we've had uh, 160 pieces of work in there. Wow. So every artist gets to put in whatever, you know, um, maybe up to five or ten pieces. And other shows... We might have one in Arts in Bartlett, we're hoping, and they only have room for maybe 20 pieces, so maybe we'll have 20 artists who can have one piece each. Um, it's pretty much, we try to do it based on whether or not the artist is going to be able to be there. We don't want to just be representatives for artists. We want people who are involved. So that's right. how we pretty much determine it. And, you know, I didn't realize that. I thought that you the the artwork was shown, and maybe you'll tell me that you do this too, but that the artwork was shown at your location, but you're saying that you're you're taking it to many different places and galleries and things. Yeah, we take it all over the state of Illinois, and um, we've been to Indiana, we've been to Indianapolis, to um, national conferences, um, 
like DBSA we were at last weekend. It was in Itasca this year, which was nice. When we, um, we'll go anywhere <laughs> to get the word out. Yes, bring bring the art and information and all the good works. Again, it's the awakeningsproject dot org. And, you know, we just have a few minutes left, Irene, so I want to give you the floor here and, you know, give you a chance to talk to our listeners if there's anything that you would like to say. Um, I just want to say that we've been, this project has just taken on a life of its own. It's like the Energizer Bunny. It just keeps going and going. (laughs) We do have younger people coming in and taking over officers as our vice president now, um, and secretary are thirty in their thirties, and we're um, trying to get, you know, people to keep it going after Bob and I run out of steam. <laughs> so um, sure to keep keep things moving for the future. Yes, we do want this to just keep going and going. Uh, it is a separate five hundred one c three organization. We started out under NAMI Illinois, and um, we spun off in two thousand and four. And we have scholarships available from St. Isaac Job's in Hinsdale. They donate money every year for us to give as scholarships, and so does Nami DuPage. And, you know, we've just garnered respect. We've gotten grants from Hanover Township Mental Health Board. And since we've been in Elgin, we we just get noticed. We were in the Tribune recently, and we have um, just so many positive media articles that have been written about us that... um, are in contrast to some of the other media that covers the negatives about people with mental illnesses. Right. Just a just a win-win situation. I have to say, when I got your letter, I was really excited about it and to talk to you because I had never heard of this project. I thought, what a great idea. What an incredible project and beautiful artwork to boot. <laughs> Thanks. Would you say that, you know, now the pieces that I'm looking at here that I saw on the website, a lot of it is very modern, really interesting. Is is most of the work modern or is it varied? Um, it's varied. You know, we have people who are totally self-taught. And then we have people who work with us who have a master's degree from the School of the Art Institute. Others who have bachelor's degrees in art. People who, you know, it's just the whole gamut of uh, whether or not somebody is really schooled in art or if they're just working from their heart and self-taught so so a little of everything yeah and you know for our listeners too i forgot to ask you that if they want to buy art or they want to contribute or volunteer or whatever what should they do um they can come to the studio on any saturday when we're open um and just sit in with us and learn more about us um there's a page on our website for donating if they wanted to donate it is all tax deductible, and um, if they want to volunteer their time to help us hang a show or whatever people's interest is, we're, we'd love to talk to them about it. Yeah, and get some get some good art learning while you're there, too, from all these creative geniuses running around. <laughs> <laughs> so it's awakeningsproject.org. And, Irene, you said that the, the location at Elgin is working out really, really well. Do you see... When you talk about growth for for the future, do you see more locations, or what what are your thoughts on that? You know, we're not really sure about how to manage this, but we just met people from Kentucky who want to start a chapter, and someone from California who wants to start a chapter. When we um, went to the DBSA conference last week, we met people from all over the country who were like, wow, we want to do this in our area. Oh, I love that. So get it all over the country. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Don't, doesn't that make you feel good that, you know, something that you started from the heart can go nationwide and support so many people? That would be incredible. It's a beautiful thing, Irene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you had time to talk to me this morning. And and you said you're a working artist as well, too. Do we see some of your work on the website? And um, Yeah, there's a few pieces of mine on the website. I'm <laughs> spend a lot of time doing the administrative stuff and I don't make enough time to just be creative. <laughs> yeah, because I, well, I have to say I, I was an art major in college. Not brilliant by any sense, but it's so true. You really need that time to let your brain expand to get that, that artwork going. So I know with your busy schedule, we're lucky to see a couple pieces out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go look for your art on the website too. Is it Does it say your name on it too? Yeah. So we know it's yours. Okay. 
All right. It's awakeningprojects.org. Thank you so much, Irene Lamb O'Neill, for being my guest this morning. Thank you.